Welcome. Today we're going to be reviewing Spin Out. Spin Out is a puzzle from the 1980s made by the company Binary Arts. Later, they changed their name to Think Fun. Taking it out of the packaging, you can see as a small booklet here, telling us a little bit about Binary Arts, information about the inventor, a solution to a four-step version of this game and how it relates to the Chinese ring puzzle, and then some product information about other products, some of which we may be looking at in future videos. Putting that to one side, let's have a look at the puzzle itself. So the idea of this puzzle is to start in this orientation and slide this metal piece out of the grey sleeve. However, it is stopped because there's a groove here and the only way to get past this groove is using this turning circle. However, then the next piece gets stuck. So the idea is to have all of the pieces lined up like this last one here and then slide the entire item out of the sleeve. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then show you how to put it back together. So here we are in the original start position. Now we need to make all of these vertical pieces, we'll call them one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, horizontal. They're currently vertical, pointing upwards, we need to get them sideways. So that means number one here needs to be turned horizontal. The only way for one to be horizontal would be if two was vertical. I can show you that here with six and seven. To turn six horizontal, seven needs to be vertical. If seven was horizontal, I can't change six to be horizontal. So thinking about this logic, number six needs to stay vertical and be the one catching on this groove at the end. All of these others will need to be in a horizontal fashion. So knowing that, the first thing I want to do is change number three here into horizontal. So seven, number uh, five, and this is a sequential puzzle. So I have to do this first step and to change number three into being horizontal, we knew that number four would be vertical. So that's our first step. I now need to change this number four to be horizontal. So I need to go and reverse those first steps that I completed. So three and four are horizontal. Now just to make number five horizontal. And this is the position we're looking for. We can now slide almost all the way out. I can't turn two, but I can turn one. Now to make number two horizontal, I have to turn number three vertical. So again, there's a lot of undoing, repeating these steps. There may have been a slightly quicker way of getting there. But as with sequential puzzles, once you get in a bit of a pattern. If it's working, stick with it.
So this needs to be up, so this needs to be down. Perfect. So now we have one and two horizontal. Number three should be a little bit quicker. Hopefully this isn't making too much of a horrible plasticky sound. It's actually quite satisfying to, uh, to maneuver. Three is complete. Four should just be a matter of seconds. Now, number five. And finally, two and one. And we're out of the sleeve. Now that's the end of the puzzle. However, if you want to have your friends complete this, you're going to have to look back into its original state. So we have our sleeve. We can slide our piece into. So here we are in our end position where the apparatus can just slide out of the sleeve. And now we want to put it back into its original start position. To do this, we will need number one to turn vertical. So number two will have to be vertical to be able to turn number one. The rest of these pieces, three, four, five, six, and seven, are going to have to be horizontal. Now to do that, we can just slowly start reversing the pattern that we had. So now that five is vertical, I can turn four vertical, to turn three vertical, let's go back. Again, it's just a matter of keeping that pattern, understanding where you're trying to get to. So we're trying to get to the point where we've got just number three vertical here. There we are, one of our key positions. We just need to make number three horizontal. So to make three horizontal, we need to make four vertical. Okay, just got to get this number four piece again, horizontal. And now the last few pieces, five, six, and seven horizontal. And this is the position that we were aiming for. Very important puzzles to kind of have an aim Number two, vertical, which is going to allow us to change number one into a vertical position. And the rest of this should be relatively straightforward. We're just going to aim to have number four in a vertical position, because that's going to allow us to change number three. And all these other pieces, five, six, and seven, horizontal.
should be very used to at this point having pieces five, six, and seven changed into vertical, and there we have it. It's a very satisfying puzzle to play with. It's uh, very synonymous with lots of other puzzles out there. And once you learn this technique and this sequential pattern, it definitely helps with your uh, puzzle solving going forward. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. This is a great puzzle. You can get these still on um, eBay um, really cheaply. Um, don't go spending too much money um, on an old 1980s puzzle like this. Uh, don't worry too much about the box. I tend not to, uh, you know, have this on display. It's a bit of a plastic puzzle. I don't think it looks super fantastic. Uh, so the box isn't that important to me, but the puzzle itself is, is fantastic. It's great to play with and it helps you uh, learn how to solve sequential puzzles like this going forward. I hope you've enjoyed this first video. There will be plenty more coming soon.